I believe it's, uh, it's like Kent Carson Jr. and he calls it purrs. So, and I've said that before too. Not, not, not to you. And I'm like, I said this before. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying this to you. Oh, I, sh I, I, oh, I forgot to say at the beginning of like Q and A, I wanted to do something um, where it's like no bummers. Do you guys watch McElroy Brothers? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Like, please no bummer questions. I can't confirm head cannons, or we'll be here all day until people like hop onto the internet and start saying, "I told you so." <gasps> um, yeah, I think yeah, and I have the right to deflect questions. I'd like to ask. What, I mean, look, obviously there are, there are plenty of black hockey fans. Yeah. But what's what kind of reaction has it been to you? Yeah. I mean, that's, you People know. assume that I play hockey <laughs> or that I'm in Canada. I don't play hockey. I'm in Texas. Um, you just have our head spinning. Yeah. And I think it's something where, when it comes to like being like being black and telling this story, um, I think it was, just, again, it, it's like this weird, it's, and more like obsessed with like subverting masculinity, but I think I was interested in like infiltrating this weird like white guy culture and just being like <laughs> this weird white guy culture and then making them like my puppets. <laughs> 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 so, I think that's I think it's pretty funny. I don't know. Um, Works for yeah. me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good. Um, you talked about um, masculinity and. Homosexuality has to be like sort of a haha, it's just a joke thing yeah. in sports. And you've also talked about how Jack's anxiety comes a lot from uh, the pressure of being like his dad and the pressure of being a prodigy. But I was wondering if um, having to hide his sexuality, because we've seen a lot of Jack City a lot, but we don't really see Jack. I wonder if that contributes to his anxiety. That's a really good question because I, I think while it does in the like, natural sense of like it's not a so socially acceptable, I think Jack is 100% comfortable with his sexuality. And where, well, I mean, who who is 100% comfortable with sexuality? Like, 90, everyone is like at 99, he's like the ideal person who's like, I don't know, maybe everyone is. Um, but I think Jack- But what's he worried about? I think Jack is more worried about his like reputation and what it means for uh, his family and in a, in a purely like, 100% team player way, Jack is probably like, well, if I come out as gay, how's that going to affect the game? Like, <laughs> <laughs> but I don't think, like, in my head, and it's, and I wonder if people, because I've seen people, like, kind of say, like, why isn't Jack, like, totally stressed out about it? Biddy, that's Biddy's thing. Like, Biddy, it, like, his, Jack's parents, like, know and love him, and they already know that he has, like, smooched boys before. <laughs> so he's, and he's kind of like, well, and, and he went to Samuel and was like, well, all of these people, like, why would they reject me? I think he has different fears. And I also think that's, um, I wanted to show that people um, who are queer have different perceptions and different, like, they are comfortable with their sexuality in different ways. Um, yeah. Well, it's interesting. Ultra male, you know, <laughs> yeah. hyper like masculine. masculine. <laughs> um, I mean, you know, it's, I mean, it's, it's cool. Yeah. Is, it, is it real? Oh, no, it's like, that's the thing. Like, I, I hope it's, I hope it will one day be real, and that like 50 years from now, someone will pick up check please and be like, "This is really boring. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is just how it is." But it's really, it's kind of fantastically unrealistic. Um, and I'm lucky because like the friends that I make who are male, and like my brother, my brother's like, uh, he was a marine. Um, he is like no longer a marine, but you know, once a marine, always a marine. Mm -hmm. Like toughest guy in the world, but like guy works as hard as sleep. And I'm fortunate to have grown up with male figures in my life who were really, really open about their emotions. But um, yeah, I, that that for me is like a world. Um, in our, uh, grad school, and I took a writing class, and a professor talked about how all writing is all writers are kind of like angry in the way, and their all stories are kind of like an argument for how the world should be or how they see the world, and that's that's really what Czech yeah. is. I feel like guys should be able to talk about. Their <laughs> More questions? Yeah. Sure. Um, it's kind of a silly question. Um, will we ever um, hear the story about Holster and Esther S? Oh, no. <laughs> so, um, uh, what, uh, what this uh, uh, awesome reader is referring to is uh, Esther Shapiro is Holster's like sophomore screw date. I think, yeah, sophomore, sophomore year screw date. 
and for whatever reason, they make fun of her a little bit, which is not set, not nice, but it's kind of funny. And um, Holster, like she and Holster went on a date, and yeah, they just keep bragging on her. So I don't think we'll ever hear it, although it's been brought up twice now in like, the world of Czech police. That's a question. That's a that's an insider question. <laughs> Is there any character that you don't particularly like? No, 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 no. <laughs> no, I like, I honestly, genuinely like every character I come up with, even if other characters don't like each other. I think it, I think it's interesting when people assume that I don't like a character because another character is mean to that character. I'm like, no, this is, this is great. <laughs> um, I, 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 I really would not, I, there's, there's just not a character that I, would write that I wouldn't like, even if uh, bad stuff happens to them, even if they're mean, even if they seem boring. Like, there's, it has to be interesting to me to write that character. Sure. Uh, you mentioned that um, you're like, working on this comic every day, and like sports, they're full of injuries, but like, so is comic making. Yeah. So I wonder if you have any like advice or process for like keeping like your like health up while doing what is actually pretty physically. Um, I, I try to get out and I try to like exercise whenever I can. Um, eating right is good. Eat right, exercise. Um, <laughs> Give a standing desk. Uh, no, I don't have a standing desk. I feel like I should get one. Apparently Drawing they, a treadmill. Right yeah. Uh, I have friends who've tried that out. Um, <laughs> I do stretch a lot, like, because um, my first quarter of grad school, I started getting like carpal tunnel things in my uh, fingers, and it was. So traumatic. I thought I was going to like have to drop out. I got wrist brace. I started putting like tiger balm all over my body. Um, it was just my hand. But <laughs> <laughs> just in case. <laughs> um, and I, yeah, it, it magically went away. Maybe it was the stress that caused that caused it. Maybe it was psychosomatic. But then since then, I've always done stretches. Like if I like whenever I go to the gym, I try to do some wrist exercises. Um, but the other side of that is like mentally. I think it's important to not a always be doing comics, have another way to like recharge yourself, and b not like to have friends, family, um, anybody who aren't always in the comics world. I think that's one thing that keeps me sane when I can just talk to someone who doesn't know what a web comic is, talk to someone, which happens all the time. Um, it helps you. It just helps you like realize, put everything in perspective, like. Most people have. Most people don't read comics. Most people don't know about comics, and what you're doing is fun, but it's not the most important thing in the world. Sorry, you guys like comics. They're really <laughs> 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 very good. I'm glad you enjoy it. Um, the web. The web. I mean, I, I, for a new generation. I mean, for me, I'm a little older. I mean, mini comics was basically yeah, zines yeah. were how basically people began the slow, long slog to well, rejection after rejection yes. <laughs> from mainstream publishers uh, uh, and, you know, a life of poverty and creative, you know, fulfillment. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, is the web the new yeah. beginnings of the slog uh, toward so. maybe a little bit better reception? Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. I mean... I feel like people can access their audiences more immediately sure. because of that um, audiences can start to more immediately support creators. But you're, you're totally right in that it is a bit of a slog when people are just like constantly putting their stuff out there and maybe not getting the response that they want. Um, yeah, it's, I think it's now it's now just moved to totally online where everyone has a web comic now. Everyone has some type of web presence that they should. Well, just from the, you know, Mr. Mainstream, you know, book publishing. Yes. I mean, um, and my focus on comics in particular. Certainly, crowdfunding, uh, uh, the two together, mm -hmm. are transforming this business as I think more conventional publishers are seeing. Uh, well, the Savarn team, yeah. to, to a certain extent, uh, where the next generation of artists are coming from. Uh, it certainly always will be tough. But it's really interesting in that the, the way to build a platform, and I guess get feedback, do you feel that being out there early mm -hmm. on with your work obviously had some mm -hmm. impact on your development? Yeah, well, mm, I mean, I'm not I, saying I that yeah. you're, you're, you're you know, mechanically doing what yeah. your fans say do, but I wasn't, people I wasn't. are saying, oh, why are you doing this, or why are you doing that, or I don't I, like the way this looks. I think I'm glad I 
I'm glad I did put my work out there immediately because I did get a lot of, well, not just, some of it was like actual feedback, some of it was like, why'd you do that? Like, um, others were like people just maybe, it's Tumblr, so you get all sorts of things. And I, and I think that it helped because now I'm able to kind of isolate what I need to, isolate feedback when it's actually helpful, listen to people when they're actually saying something that's like, this is problematic. I can, I can parse that out now instead of just being able, just taking in everything, you become a little bit better. Uh, but what, I'm glad you mentioned at the beginning of um, kind of this question how web comics are a farm team. I, I think when editors are looking for like um, new talent, they do go to the web comics. They do see who's doing well on Kickstarter. They do see, they go and investigate and scout all that stuff. Yeah. Yes. Uh, um, bouncing off the the comments made about representation, I also, I also wanted to say that I appreciate the the racial representation mm -hmm. that is shown on the hockey team. Like um, like first we had Nursi, then Sue Mardo, then oh wait. No, I get you. I know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I feel Mardo, yeah. Child, yeah, yeah. And um, and I just want to say that I really appreciate that because. Growing up, like I like I grew up playing hockey as well. Yeah. And for the longest time, uh, I was like the only person of color on my hockey team. And like incidentally, I was also a D-man. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like, 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 like D-man. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yeah. For so long, and not even not even just hockey. Um, on the hockey team, like outside of hockey, like grew up in a very Canadian, I guess. <laughs> like, like at school, we, at, like every other every other student was really invested in hockey. Like at like in class, we had hockey jersey days where like, oh, school are Canadian. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 No, I, I, I totally see what you're saying. Like, um, and thank you for appreciating the, appreciating the representation. Um, I. The more I write, and I think when like I was in high school, I think I wrote a lot of like white guy characters who were always like really emo for whatever reason. <laughs> and the more I write, and like the more I, I guess mature as a creator, I it's hard for me to not have representation. For me, it's just like oh, I'm writing about my friend who happened to be like a 100 pound Vietnamese girl from like Boston. Like it's it's not. I, I try to. It's less like a conscious effort to. Put that in there. It's just something that absolutely just needs to be there. That makes sense. So thank you. Yeah. Uh, I don't know how. But this, when does this thing go to? The one fifteen to one. To one. Oh, I thought it go because you know it, it, it does say fifteen on the. One more question, just in this is: um, Are other media circling around you? Uh, will the feature film be coming out? The video game. Yeah. Um, so check please. Yeah. This is the first person shooter. <laughs> <laughs> Merch, uh, yeah. can oh, we right. get jerseys and all the rest? We're working on jerseys, so right. like, well, I'll definitely make it. All right, um, Ngozi Ngazu. Thank uh, you guys so awesome. much. Awesome. Ultra male, you know, <laughs> hyper like masculine. Um, I mean, you know, it's I mean, it's it's cool. Yeah. Is it is it real? Oh no, it's like. That's the thing. Like, I, w I hope it's. I hope it will one day be real, and that like 50 years from now, someone will pick up check please and be like, "This is really boring." <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is just how it is. But it's really, it's kind of fantastically unrealistic. Um, and I'm lucky because like the friends that I make who are male, and like my brother. My brother's like uh, he was a marine. Um, he is like no longer a marine, but you know, once a marine, always a marine. Mm -hmm. Like toughest guy in the world, but like guy works as hard as sleep. And I'm fortunate to have grown up with male figures in my life who were really, really open about their emotions. But um, yeah, I, that that for me is like a world. Um, in our, uh, grad school, and I took a writing class, and a professor talked about how all writing is all writers are kind of like angry in the way, and they're all stories are kind of like an argument for how the world should be or how they see the world and that's that's really what check yeah. is I feel like guys should be able to talk about their feelings. <laughs> <laughs> More questions. Yeah. Sure. Um, it's kind of a silly question. Um, will we ever um, hear the story about Holster and SS? Oh no. <laughs> so um, uh, what, uh, what this uh, uh, awesome reader is referring to is 
Uh, Esther Shapiro is Holster's like sophomore screw date. I think yeah, sophomore sophomore year screw date. And for whatever reason, they make fun of her a little bit, which is not set, not nice, but it's kind of funny. And um, Holster like she and Holster went on a date, and yeah, they just keep bragging on her. So I don't think we'll ever hear it. Although it's been brought up twice now in like, the world of check please. That's a question. That's a that's an insider question. <laughs>